At the top of our screen, we've got EV over here. At the bottom screen, we've got it rendered out in cycles, and I'll show you exactly how to get this effect. One thing to keep in mind that is very important that I stepped over in the tutorial is the actual emissions. So if we select this object here, go to the material properties and look at the emissions, you'll notice that all the emission strengths I'm using 20, 30, 40. The reason why my emission strengths are so high is because Cycles struggles to pick it up. So a good emission strength to use is around 30, just to let you know. So always choose 30 as your emission strength to get this kind of effect. Uh, anyways, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Currently, we're looking at an EV uh, render viewport. And if we turn off Bloom, it looks like that. Turn on Bloom, it looks like that. And whenever you switch to Cycles, you'll notice that the Bloom effect just does not work the same. I'll give it a few seconds to load. It's busy loading, but you can see the bloom is completely gone. So let me show you how to add the bloom effect into cycles. I'm going to switch this back to Eevee as a reference point. And I've already rendered out the cycles image. It looks like this. It's beautiful. It's better for screen space reflections and all that jazz. So now we want to add the bloom effect to this. Right. So all we need to do is lift this up, go to your compositor over here. And if you want to see the background image, all you have to do is press Shift A, search, and type in View, and click Viewer, drop this in over here, and connect it. And then you could say, it, over here in your tools, you want to make sure the backdrop is turned on, and also you use nodes, or else you won't be able to see any of the nodes anyways. Um, you want to click on View, and you want to say Fit, or Reset Backdrop, whatever you like. I'm going to leave it on Reset, and we've got the EV as a reference point. And when I rendered this out, there was one setting I did turn on. So I just want to make you aware of it. Let me just change back to cycles so you can see the setting. Apparently you can't see it if you're not in cycles. Go back to solid view mode so it doesn't slow down the computer. Right, so in cycles, if we go over here, we need to turn on denoising data. The benefit of that, it will give a better quality when we in Compositor, which we are in right now, and I did turn this on, so keep that in mind. Right, so first thing you want to do is press Shift A, and because we had Denoiser there, we can just type in Denoise, and we can use this no problem. And the last thing you want to do is type in Glare, G-L-A-R-E, and connect this over here. And currently our backdrop doesn't show the correct image. It's not the updated image. So the way we do that is we can just disconnect this and connect this over here. It may take a little while to load, but it's a way faster than a normal cycles render. All right, so currently by the default settings, you get this weird result. So to get the same effect that you'll see in Eevee, let me just switch the render back to Eevee quickly. I'll leave this on cycles because I don't want to mess with this. Anyways, to change it to make it look normal, you just go to Fog Glow. And that should pretty much do it. Alright, so I've chosen Fog Glow, and this might be enough Fog Glow for you, or you might want to make it less. If you want to make it less, you can make it any number between size 6 and 9. 6 is the lowest of here, and 9 would be the highest. It'll take a little while to load, and this would be 9 which might be a bit too intense. The other thing you can do is increase the quality to make it high quality, the glow. And I find that a really good uh, size, at least for me, you can decide what you like, is around 7.5. And there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Once you've got your final image, you can just render this out and you're all set.